My name is Julia. Today I'm going to talk about films, coming of age films that influenced me, especially when I was coming of age. These were all films that I was very, very, very into as a teenager. One of the films was, it came out quite recently, so it's not, I'm not a teenager anymore, but I put it in the list because it still influenced me as an adult. Yes, so I'm gonna begin. Oh yeah, just a warning, so all the films um, are kind of like, don't really have a like a, an exciting plot. <laughs> that sounds a bit bad. Uh, they're all films that kind of follow people's lives and their kind of relationships and they're more about the, the like small things. There's not like a big action plot, which I think kind of reflects being a teenager because every little thing is an issue. I wore my anti-social shirt to suit the mood. So let's go. The first film um, I would like to talk about is The Way Way Back. It's an American independent comedy drama that came out 2013. So I was like in my prime, I was 16, 17. And it's by Nat Faxon and Jim Rash. And Jim Rash, I love him so much. He's the Dean from Community. And um, so it, it was always gonna be a special film. The film follows um, a 14 year old boy called Duncan who goes on summer holidays with his mother and the mother's kind of wealthy, but very, and very mean boyfriend and um, the boyfriend's daughter. His mother is played by Tony Collette and his kind of, his, the, the mother's evil, boyfriend is played by Steve Carell. Trent and Duncan's relationship is um, established very early on um, in a scene where they're on the way to the holiday and um, Trent asks Duncan on a scale of one to ten what he thinks he is as a person and um, so Duncan says I think I'm a six and then Trent says no I think you're a three which is horrible yeah and so we already you already hate him basically the story follows duncan in this kind of beach uh, uh, like beach town place where they're staying over the holidays and we follow what he does there and most importantly he comes across a water park called waterwiz and gets to know the owner owen he starts a friendship with owen and then um gets to do kind of odd jobs around the water park and this water park becomes like a safe haven for Duncan. It's his escape from the real world. He He's needed there, people value him there. He gets to know the employees who become his friends and kind of almost a family. And it's just it's just really, really lovely to see um, all the adults being so kind of kind and respectful towards Duncan, whilst at home he's being disrespected, ignored and kind of not taken seriously. So it's just a kind of, a beautiful place for Duncan to be. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what the film's about. It's just Duncan's um, experience at the water park and it's about the relationships he makes and the people he meets. Uh, there's a really beautiful scene at the end of the film where um, his mother, Duncan's mother, Tony Collette, I can't remember um, the character's name, is sitting in, f in, in the front of the car with Trent, the, the evil boyfriend. And there's a kind of a, um, there's a moment where she realizes, why am I not sitting next to my beautiful son Duncan? And then moves back to sit at the very back of the car. Oh my God, is that the way, way back? The back of the... That's pretty smart. The next film I would like to talk about is a film everyone knows. It's Lazy... L Lady Bird. The 2017 independent coming of age comedy drama written and directed by Greta Gerwig, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. This film came out very, well, I get two years ago now. No, three years ago, it's 2020. Oh, that's scary. Um, came out three years ago and obviously it was very successful so people know about it, but it still made an impact on me. Even Well, made an impact on everyone because it was very successful. Okay. Lady Bird is set in 2002 and follows this teenager called Christine who calls herself Lady Bird. 
and who we will refer to as Lady Bird from now on. Follows her life at this Catholic high school. She lives in California and she's kind of unhappy with her situation, her life at the moment. Um, Lady Bird is played by Saoirse Ronan, which is very cool. Um, and it's basically the film is about the kind of relationships um, Lady Bird has in her last year at high school and there's like a bigger plot line where she She wants to leave California and she wants to go to a college that's further away and more cultured as she says She kind of says she wants to go to the East Coast Yeah, that's kind of the overarching plot line, but then we get to it's kind of about the relationship So the relationship one of them is a very important part of the film is her relationship with her mother her mother um, which I found so interesting because they they fight a lot. They don't really get on because the mother thinks um, Lady Bird is very ungrateful and doesn't like realize that it's not possible for her mother to give her everything she wants in life because she also has to work and um, doesn't have enough money to um, to fund Lady Bird's dreams. It's just such a lovely and realistic, beautiful relationship because. Um, because you just get to, it's, I don't know, I found it so real because you see them fighting, but also you just know there's an intense amount of love there and they will support each other and Lady Bird's in this teenage phase where everything is like, she feels like everything's against her, but her mother's there to help and you feel with her mother, but you also understand why Lady Bird wants to leave. And one of my favorite scenes is when they're in a thrift store and then they, um, they're they really fighting. And then they just like, in the middle of the fight, Ladybird gets out a dress and her mom's like, oh my God, that's beautiful. And Ladybird's like, yeah, it's so nice. And it kind of just shows how, yeah, they're fighting, but at their core, they know they understand each other and um, they have so much in common still. Yeah, and that's a very beautiful scene. The other big relationship in Ladybird's life is her best friend, Julie, played by um, Beanie Feldstein and um, I really like this storyline as well because they're kind of best friends but then there's a point where Lady Bird kind of wants to hang out with the cooler cooler kids and kind of deserts Julie and to hang out with others and I thought that was very kind of a realistic painful storyline of what being young and a teenager is about and you can you get you understand Ladybird because you're like yeah I, she wants more out of life but then you're like why are you ignoring Julie she's so lovely and smart and funny but in the end there's another really beautiful scene where um there's so there's these the cool kids who are um, her this cool popular girl called Jenna and this guy she is dating called Kyle who's played by Timothy Chalamet they're on the way to the prom and then and um, they decide to the cool kids decide to go to a house party Lady Bird is like, right, that's it. I realize now you are not my true friends and goes to see Julie and they go to prom together as friends and it's so beautiful. She also dates a, da uh, a guy called Danny who's played by Lucas Hedges and um, he's kind of her first boyfriend, proper boyfriend and you kind of follow the whole relationship. Then um, she sees Danny kissing another man and then that falls apart but then they become friends again after he um, kind of confides in her and his difficulties with coming out so yeah it's beautiful so I, I as I said it's all about the relationships and um, yeah it's a uh, it's really I, I love it I love Lady Bird it's so cool the next film I want to talk about is lol laughing out loud <laughs> sorry the name is just so funny um, this is a French comedy film um, out from the year 2008 Directed by Lisa Azuelos. Azuelo, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and I don't want to offend anyone. Just imagine I said it in a really nice French accent. This film was so important to me in my teens. I feel like we watched it every year in French class, and everyone was always talking about it because it was so French and just the lifestyle. Oh, basically, it's about this teenager called Lola, and she lives in Paris with her mom. And her mom is played by Sophie Marceau, who's this um, really famous French actress who um, was the star of the 1980s film La Boom, which is about a teenager having a, at a party. And it's kind of based on this storyline. So it's also about a teenager in Paris 
um, living her best life. And the story is about just follows Lola and her mother and her friends and boys she's seeing um, and just their relationships around Paris. I remember it having such a huge impact on me because it was such a different world. Like there's actually these young people living in Paris, like going to concerts and eating baguettes and going to French colleagues and the the guy she's dating in the film was called Maël and he they all the boys in this film had insane hair and it was like almost like too much but I remember all my friends just basing every everything off this film I mean like a man has to look like this and I just really liked it I think it's a really funny cup like it's a good coming of age film. I remember everyone was obsessed with it when I was like 15, 16. Um, I definitely give it a watch, it's very fun, very French. There's a scene where they, um, there's a part of the film where they go to the UK as like an exchange and that was very funny as well. And they use um, the King Slola as a, as this like a big portion of the film as that as a soundtrack. That was very good as well. Yeah, it's a good film. I recommend. That's why it's in my list. The next film um, that had a huge impact on me when I was young. <laughs> young! Those were the days. Um, was Palo Alto by Gia Coppola, which is a very moody and teen angsty film. But I thought that was my life back then. I was like very moody and you know, angst was real. It's based on a short story collection by James Franco. Um, which I didn't know, just found that out doing the research. And he's also in the film as a weird ass football coach. And it's basically about these three teenagers um, and we follow their lives for a bit, as we do with all the other films I just said so far. It's about these best friends, one's called Teddy, um, Fred and um, April. And they're played by Jack Kilmer, Nat Wolf, and Emma Roberts. Um, who were like the coolest teens in my eyes back then. Um, and it just follows them, they're kind of like these wild teens and they they smoke weed, drink and have parties, man. Yeah, they're just wild and rowdy and it, kind of, <laughs> it just follows their lives. And I, it's hard to say, cause there's not um, that, like there's, there is obviously there's a story and you just, um, you follow, you just follow their lives. Like there's a relationship where Teddy likes April and April likes Teddy, but then there's, and then there's a really difficult relationship between Fred and Teddy and it's hard to explain. I'd watch it if you wanna feel like a moody ass teenager again. And I think Gia Coppola is really cool, so please watch. And the last film I want to talk about is very close to my heart, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, um, which I love. I was gonna say loved, but I still love it now. I've not seen it in a while, but I'll probably watch it now that I've talked about it. It came out in 2008, it's a romantic comedy, and it's based on the novel by the same name, Nicanora's Infinite Playlist. The authors were Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. Sorry, I had to look that up, because I didn't know it off by heart. And was directed by Peter Solit. Um, and this film stars um, Kat Dennings as Nora, and Michael Sarah as Nick. I feel like they're like the the teen coming of age faces of like the 2000s. So that was that's why it's already good. <laughs> the the story is told over the course of one night. This, you get to know Nick and Nora, and then they meet in a in a bar club type of thing, where Nora asks Nick to act as if he's her boyfriend. I won't tell you why, but. He, she asks him to do it and he does it. And so over the course of the night they get, they get to know each other and then they kind of start to or, or like to look for a secret show their favorite band is playing and have to find Nora's drunk best friend. And I think the film is, is mainly about their relationship and their conversations. It's very, it's very, it's ve very music heavy because they're very into bands and they just talk about all the music they love. And um, you get to, you kind of see the like the crazy nightlife they encounter. You get to know their friends, and they're all so lovable. And you just want to also be all of their friends. But it's mainly about Nick and Nora's just conversations and relationship. And it's so nice. And you just think, hopefully, 
this relationship will last longer than this one night. And I, I, sh I know it does. Also, um, the end credits, I remember were Ottoman, Ottoman by Vampire Weekend. And if that isn't enough to sell the film to you, then nothing will be. That was when, after Nicanora is when I realized you always have to sit and watch all the end credits. First of all, to like thank the people who made the film, but also because there's always really good music and you get to know all these cool new things, uh, cool new bands. I think I knew Vampire Weekend before I watched it back in the day, but maybe I didn't if it came out 2008. Okay, no one cares. That's it for my coming of age video. These are obviously just my opinions. And um, if you have any other recommendations, please tell me you're never too old to watch a good teen rom-com coming of age, independent film drama. Thank you for watching. And um, yes, see you soon. Goodbye.